Brisbane, the capital of the Australian state of Queensland, is home for over 2.6 million people. I have lived in Brisbane for over four years and have accumulated quite a few stories that happened here. Even though most of them are too personal and not interesting enough to be shared on the internet, let me tell you a few things that happened to me in this amazing city. What it was like to go through COVID-19 in Brisbane. COVID-19 was felt in Australia when the first lockdowns and flight restrictions started back in February 2020. At this time, I had just returned from a trip to Portugal to see my family and I was in the middle of my studies at QUT. I also began teaching at uni as a sessional teacher and the first couple of weeks were still presential with all students in the classroom required to wear a mask. Also, at this point, the vaccine hadn't been made yet, so... Shortly after, I believe by March 2020, we had to change to online teaching, which implied quite some preparation for all the online tools to be set up and ready to go by both students and teachers. We also had more emails to reply to, since in-person meetings were forbidden at that point. Funny to say this now, but curiously at the time, I felt more nervous to teach online than in person. Perhaps because most students prefer not to turning on their cameras, which made it a little bit harder to know how the class was following along, and this made me a little anxious. Because at the end of the day, I just wanted to do a good job explaining the subject, mostly maths and statistics. I eventually got the hang of it, and I believe most students also preferred online classes, but I must admit it was overall a positive experience. But I had other jobs at the same time, which were also impacted by COVID. During the first half of 2020, besides teaching, I was also a receptionist at one of the most popular student accommodation brands in Australia. Not to think of it, I was really into the academic life. Anyway, this job also allowed me to see the changes that COVID brought to the student hospitality industry. The Queensland government approached this student accommodation provider to see if student apartments could be turned into crisis housing for people experiencing homelessness. I also heard that they were providing housing for nurses and doctors that worked in hospitals nearby. As a receptionist, what I saw was hundreds of students, many of them Chinese and Indian, moving from that particular building to the one I was allocated to work in, which translated to tons of check-ins to process, a lot of mail to deliver to the rooms, and full COVID gear to avoid contamination, and much stress in everyone's faces as they were moved around and tried to sort their accommodation. Little after this interesting experience, I started working in farmers markets again. I had worked before from 2018 to 2019 and then decided to go back in 2020. I was working in a smoothie shop, preparing fresh fruit smoothies and acai bowls in festivals and markets. And as you might recall, this sector of the economy was also impacted. My experience here was the number of markets that were cancelled, which meant we simply couldn't work. And when we were allowed to do a market, we would have to wear masks and gloves and follow all health recommendations at that time. A particular bad episode of the impact of COVID to do this type of ambulance merchant sector was Blues Fest in Byron Bay. That was supposed to happen in April 2020. Me and my boss were driving down to Byron Bay, which is a couple of hours from Brisbane, listening to the radio the whole time to see if there was any state crossing restrictions, since we had to cross from Queensland to the state of New South Wales, right? We were optimistic since the news said no restrictions had been set. This was after we had gone there for a few days before to set up the stall and all the major produce, which took a lot of hours. The minute we arrived there, we heard on the radio that New South Wales decided to cancel the festival. This was a huge bummer for my bosses and devastating for some businesses owners that had invested a lot in this festival. From what I heard, some businesses went bust after that and others took major drawbacks. Hey man, how are you? <laughs> Hi, hello, how are you? Great. <laughs> yeah, I'm filming the market. <laughs> filming the market? Yes. Lovely. What kind of camera? What the, it's, it's a GoPro, GoPro 7. Wow, it looks impressive. Very good. It has like a hyper smooth stabilization. If oh, you start nice. running, it ah, will so smoothen out. It's awesome. It's <laughs> Do they have any pixels? Uh, I have no idea. It depends on the mode. Yeah, but in 4K. It's very good, yes. Really? High definition. Wow. <laughs> I'm just proving to everyone that this is fresh vegetables. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Anna, I'm going to go to the natural. 
The COVID-19 pandemic was truly one that our generation will remember for years to come given its impact. But all in all, I must admit that people in Brisbane held strong even during the worst lockdown periods. Much about mental wellness was being talked about on social media and on the news and I truly appreciate that, since I know plenty of people whose lockdowns made a big toll on their life. We will all hope that nothing like this will ever happen again, but if it does, I hope at least I am in a great city like Brisbane.